have any idea how long since it last started? Uh, no, I don't. I know the battery is a six volt. Battery. I think I was told it last ran in the 80s. So do you have any history on it? I, uh, not about when it ran, no. I uh, know that there was 215 of these made. Just gotta figure out what condition we're in and what we're gonna need for it looks, tools. It looks pretty. It looks pretty clean, as far as it looks perfect. Yeah. Well, I doubt they painted that number plate, but it could be a restoration. Yeah. Um. Um. Uh, you're selling this, right? Yeah. I'll, yeah. I would love to get. You know. Are you all right. Yeah. That one, you gotta turn the handle pretty deliberately. Okay. Registration card from 1936. It's a 37. This is served by that Paul. Paul McCall. 3727. We gotta say it loud and let's do this. Yeah. Got all my gear loaded up and I'm headed over to Charlie's. Take a look at this beast. Uh, I'm kind of excited. I'm a little nervous, honestly. And which is really weird because as you've guys seen, I'm I normally will jump into anything, probably because I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, and I don't know better. But okay, that's a joke. I'll probably edit that out. Anyway. Uh, so, I'm honestly a little nervous to get into this thing. Definitely, definitely new for me. I've never played with something this old. Uh, so, I'm just going to take it super nice and easy, one step at a time. Uh, we'll be back with you. Well, guys. So, I'll tell you what I know about this. Uh, this car belonged to my neighbor. He was a police officer in Chicago. He bought it many, many years ago, had it in storage. And when he retired and came out of here from Chicago, he brought this with him. Uh, it was always his plan to get it running and drive it in parades and, and things of that nature. Um, he passed a year, a little bit more than a year ago. And the people that bought the house, the car came with the house. Um, so nobody's touched it. Uh, there's a lot of rumors about what it is. Uh, I knew it was in the garage because I knew him. Um, so I had seen it a couple times, have not really handled it too much. We played with it. So the hose clamps are off of there. And I'm not, I'm not thinking somebody did a... I'm thinking somebody did complete restoration on this at some point in time. Ooh. Ooh. We're all ready for date night. I have no way of 
started knowing if that's correct, but I'm sure it doesn't have 7,000 miles on it. You certainly have a pile of information. So. This side should be parked down there. Okay. So we have to go up in the back and then towards the front. First, just make sure that back is, it looks like you must have left out of there. Interesting. I don't see that there's any latch or anything that clearly slides. And I think this is just supposed to, I mean, it moves, but it's not, it slides. And I think it's right, right size. Not bad for a like blind guess, huh? Yeah. As much as this is gonna stink, because I ain't the tiniest in the world. Get this bad boy out of there. I think we need to get that bolt off of there. So let's go do that. Uh, all right. You alright? Yeah. That one you gotta turn the handle pretty deliberately. Okay. Okay, so there we oh, are. Okay. Alright. Pull it so, back. Uh, when we pull it back, it's gonna fall. Okay. So I think we should. You got the back? I got the back. Okay, I got the front. Let's. It's gonna be heavy. Okay. I'm working it back gently. Yeah. And it's gonna come off this. There we go. Okay. okay. Are you able to? Let me fold it down on your side. Down. Yeah. Down okay. on your side. All right. All right. I'm just holding everything so no metal's touching metal. All right. So I'm gonna come around on your side and help. Well, actually, me. I think can you pick up the back and we'll just walk it straight off the front of the car. Okay. Okay. Does that work? Give me a second. It, yes, it will. Okay. Right, that's what I did. This thing is heavy, surprisingly heavy. Pump and jump fuel in this carburetor. Okay. I'm gonna go to the house and get a thing of carbon choke cleaner. What's your gauge say? Your gauge say taking a lot of voltage. Well, it's not taking any right now. It could be a faulty battery charger too. So I'll tell you what we're doing, guys. Hold on, I got my, I got my three quarter right here. Thank you, dude. Yeah. I'll tell you what we're doing, guys. Um, so this battery in here, uh, when Jim got sick, this battery was put in because the plan was to get it running to hopefully pick him up uh, from the hospital. The battery was put in, so. What we're gonna do, I think we're gonna take this valve cover off, take the spark plugs off, and just drop a little, uh, drop a little oil in each hole. Uh, just to help them seal up, help this thing get compression before we uh, roll it over. And then we, uh, at least if we do that, I feel a little bit more comfortable because it's, although it looks beautiful, it's been sitting a long, long time, so. 
I'd rather just err on the side of Tika. Interesting. How about uh, a pretty knife? Perfect, perfect. Seven eighths. Seven eighths is the trick. So my seven eighths is just a hair too thick to fit in there. That's the one. Okay. So what we're doing here, um, I, I actually think this motor might have been rebuilt and was never run. So just because of that, we're actually going to pull the plugs and just put a couple drips of oil in it to help the ring seal, help lubricate everything before we start cranking it over. I mean, like I said, I know it's been a long time, so I'd rather just err on the side of caution. No kind of weird thing, man. They just kind of... Is that your bagel, or were you thinking I'd be hungry? Oh, I... I here, hand it here, and I'll finish eating it. No, you don't got to do whatever you want with it. I just... It was like, am I, I goofy, or is there a no, bagel sitting yeah, there? No, you're right. I think if you can take a look at the spark plugs and see what seems to be run. I'm really curious. That's, yeah, no, it's it's been fired. Hmm. Where's my little? Uh, what I don't understand is why is there? What? Oh, can you hear me? That little oil can over there, sir. Okay. Do I need to get some steel wool or something for the? Nope. We'll just steal the spark plugs to make them pristine. Nah. We're just gonna give each. Or I can't. I can. I can go get some sandpaper or something. Uh, I'd rather. I think we run almost as much risk of messing up the gap or following the plug or any other calamity that might befall them. Did you score it for all in there? Yeah, I just given given them one to score at each. Just uh. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, we found a dipstick. Right here. Let's see, we got oil in it. Let out here so we can take a look at it. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that is, that is clear oil. Yeah. I'm having a, Charlie, I'm having a serious thought here. I'm listening. I'm wondering if this was never started after that engine was rebuilt. Uh, you know, it could be what happened. And I'm not kidding. That that oil is new-ish. Yeah. It, it's been sitting, but it's not been used. It's not used oil. It's definitely not used oil. And I know that Jim never drove this car. Okay. Okay. I did not know that. Um. At least that's why well, I shouldn't say I know that. That's what I was told. Yeah. So I'm going to make an assumption that... Jim did everything you could do to restore this car and for whatever reason it got left sitting and then it wouldn't start and here it sat. Okay. Right. Okay, well. It's just about out of sight, but it's it's there, I can touch it. So we're gonna actually crank this off with, uh, with the ignition off. And just, we're gonna hold that bucket over there and get an idea of what's coming out of the gas tank. Uh, if anything, just so I know how to be worried about. But we're obviously gonna have to put some fresh gas in it. So let me know when you're ready. I'm ready. No gas. Okay, so nothing coming out of the gas tank. Yeah. So, what I 
I'm going to do. I don't know if that's the gas tank's empty or the pump's not good or what. Well, uh, I think I'm going to I'm gonna run home. Mm -hmm. I'll be right back. And I'm going to get a five-gallon container. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm just going to throw this fuel line back on and at least temporarily have uh, this so there's not gas shooting. Okay. So, do you have a fire extinguisher out in this drop? Uh, Highly, extremely unlikely. Yeah. Uh, just in case this thing should catch fire, yeah. it's in neutral. Yeah. I would suggest fire will be in the front. Let's both get around to the back and push it out of the garage. Yeah. Again. You want me to... Did I do that? Yeah. Oh, ho, 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 guys, we just discovered something. What? It starts with the throttle. <laughs> I've never done one of them before. Good to know. I got some started for it. Uh, I don't want it because the compression's so high. Okay. Might blow the rings right at the. I might have flooded it too. Try. Did you hear that thing? It wanted to go right there. Yeah. Spark? Yeah, you heard it start to mm -hmm. chuff a couple times. It wouldn't do that. Oh, wait, wait. We're going to try it one more time. You ready? Yeah. Hold on. All right, we're going to give it a, a hint of the starting fluid. Okay. Well, I'm happy just to learn that it will turn over by itself. That was pretty amazing. You know, starting fluid is the devil for most motors. And I know a lot of guys like it, but man, it's killing. I'll explain a little bit while you're turning it, just a little bit. Yes. I wonder where's the air 
cleaner for it. It's in the back seat. Can you start it? It's a 37. Yeah, because here's the, oh, that's cool. There's the, there's the limo driver with this car in 1937. And there's the frame off restoration that was done. Crazy. It's crazy that somebody did that much work on this car yeah. and put it in their garage yeah. for 35 years or 40 years. Or something. Yeah. Or something. Yeah, well, I know in the time that... So I should tell you guys what we what we know. Um, my neighbor Jim passed away last year. He bought this car in the early 90s. He never drove it. Um, he bought it. It had been restored and put in storage. It was supposedly used in the in the movie Sting. In, in I'm sorry. It was supposedly used in the movie Sting. About a year ago, Jim had cancer. Uh, we came over here, uh, myself and my friend Scott came over, we put a battery in this car. We never started the car, nor did we try to start the car. Jim got sick and went back in the hospital. And so the car was locked back in the garage um, and we never touched it. The plan was is when he got better, we were gonna take this car and pick him up at the hospital. Really cool guy, my neighbor, he used to come over and bug me all the time. He never, never came out of the hospital. So it never happened. It's really, really cool. Charlie was nice enough to ask me to come help with it because he knew I'd wrenched on it before. I'm actually kind of happy to start it. It's, it's just a little bit nostalgic, you know, we kind of got to work on it. It'd been sitting here forever and then I never actually got to start it because Jim passed away. So. I'm, I'm really honored to do, and we're just kind of looking at the paperwork, but I'm really honored to be able to come over here and play with it. So that's kind of cool. They got a whole whole stack of pictures of the restoration. Yeah. You're right. I mean, look, it took it down to the frame. Took it right down to the frame. Registration card from 1936. It's a 37. This is served by that Paul. Paul McCall. 3727. Or 3937. Wow. What does it say? Paul McCall applied for what? Hey guys, that was super cool. Glad we got it done. Don't forget the merch. It's how we make our living. And we went up to the mountain. We saw gyms. And I bought a toy or two. Stay tuned for that.